Well, Tobin and Joanne Heim both had a rosy picture of the way married life would be. You know, blissful, perfect, complete, and beautiful. However, once their vows were said and the honeymoon was over, real life set in and they found, like many of us, that they both had very different expectations. And happily ever after, the Tobins offer tried and true counsel for your first year of marriage and beyond. And guys, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. You guys must have this down pat because you're sitting close together. You're holding hands. <laughs> <laughs> you must have this down pat here. Just for the television. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, what is the most alarming trend that you're seeing among, among people that are newlyweds or, or looking to get married? Sure. I think one of the challenges these days is that couples are waiting to get married later and later. Mm. And in doing that, there are more time for patterns to be ingrained, for them to figure out uh, how they like to live their life as a single person so that the shock that comes when they finally do get married is rather significant. It's huge. Right. Now, what was the hardest lesson you guys learned your first year of marriage? Because you say that the first year of marriage is really very important. It's almost like you're setting the trend for the rest of your marriage. Well, you do. And I think we had just such big expectations. I thought that we would get married and life would be perfect. It would be happily ever after and we'd ride off into the sunset. And that's not the way that it was. So you spent more time planning for your wedding than you did mm -hmm. for your actual marriage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We spent lots and lots of time picking mm -hmm. the perfect caterer and the perfect dress and all those kinds of things. And it, it's like we didn't look beyond the wedding day. Right. Now I heard that your first major fight was actually about how the towels were folded. And they, I know it sounds ridiculous, but we've all been there. Mm -hmm. It was. You know, I think some of the biggest fights married couples have are about some of the littlest things. And really, I called my mom and said, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think um, Joanne had folded the towels, and I walked in and saw that they were folded wrong, so I refolded them, and then she came back and saw that I had folded them wrong and refolded them. And I think we folded the towels back and forth times before it almost came to blows. We said, wait a minute. <laughs> now, why do we kind of haggle and fight over those little things that seemingly it's, we know, I think, intellectually, it's meaningless. Who cares how the towels are folded? How does it end up being big explosions in our marriage? Well, it's because we haven't practiced those little things. You know, I think in premarital counseling and uh, through other things that we read, um, we really expect to deal with the big issues like money and uh, church and how we're going to raise kids and all those things, but we don't practice how to get through those little fights. And so those are the things that sneak up. And a lot of times we haven't practiced fighting, period. Right. So we get into these situations where we really don't know how to deal with that kind of a conflict. And, you know, learning how to fight is one of the most key aspects of having a good marriage. I've never heard that before. <laughs> How do you learn how to fight? How do you practice, well, you need you practice fighting? <laughs> <laughs> we all get that. So You know, there's towels and toothpaste and all kinds of things that you can find to fight about. But it's in those little things that you have the opportunity to learn to compromise and how to fight in a way that's constructive and not destructive. Because hard times are going to come and you really need to have things in place so that you can weather the storm. You know, the big thing is figuring out how to get to the win-win. You know, we, we learn at an early age that we fight to win, and that's mm -hmm. the point of it. And so we get into our marriage, and we have these conflicts, and we really try to win those arguments, and we try to win those situations over. And, you know, you hurt somebody if you try to do that. So figuring out how to get to the win-win in those difficult situations is really critical. Right. What about premarital counseling? Do you think that couples should do that? And do you think kind of the traditional way that people are doing counseling is sufficient? You know, I think premarital counseling is important. And we need to talk about those big issues. How do we manage money? And there's going to be conflict, so what's a good pattern for fighting? And things like that. But it's in the little nitty-gritty details that so many times come. And in the book, that's one of the things we wanted to talk about. Not just how do you manage money, but how much money is appropriate to spend on gifts? How many gifts do you buy? Wow. How do you, you know, what's reasonable for spending money to go out to dinner? Things like that, because it's those little details where conflict comes up. Right. See, now that is so true, because, oh, like, it's Christmas time, Christmas is coming, mm -hmm. and my husband is like, okay, $100 on gifts. And I'm like, $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, and we'll go back and forth. And so when you find yourself in a situation like that, how do you come to some sort of compromise so that neither one feels like they, they, they had to give up? I think one of the things that's important is to understand that 
that your spouse came from a family and that mm -hmm. they did things a certain way. And so I think when you can see the bigger picture, in my family, we got one really, really big okay. gift that helps explain why your spouse wants to do it mm -hmm. that way. Whereas in another family, maybe you got a whole lot of little things. And so that helps you decide, okay, this is where I came from. That's where you came from. And now where do we want to go right. together? And kind of respecting, you know, each other's experiences in it, right? Oh, absolutely. I think I think a big part of that is understanding where your spouse came from, understanding the patterns and expectations that come out of that situation. It gives you a sense of appreciation, and and it keeps you from thinking, "Wow, this person is just crazy." Right. I know, hundred dollars. That's absolutely <laughs> insane. Well, speaking of the holidays, a lot of times in-laws and people are coming over. What place do in-laws have in? Life. Oh, it's huge, you know, because that's where your spouse came from. And so if you spend time with the in-laws, you really get a better understanding of where your spouse came from and why they do some of the things that they do. And uh, we really recommend highly in the book that uh, people spend as much time with their in-laws as they can because it's going to give them real insight into the person they're marrying. You know, and in the battles that, that can rage, which, which gets the most time, finance or sex? I don't know. It's probably a tie. I think it's probably a tie. And you know, I think every couple has their issue that they struggle with. And for some people, that's going to be money. And they're going to make progress, but it's always going to be their thing. For other people, it might be learning how to communicate effectively. And for other people, it might be sex. And so I think it's going to depend on the couple. Right. Now, for those people that are watching out there, whether they've been married for a year or 52 years, and they feel like they've messed up already. They mm. feel like, I, I hear what you're saying, and I wish that I could do that. But our is already a mess. What are some of the things that they can do today to try to make a turnaround? You know, I think the big thing is to, to figure out what is your issue? What is that thing that you continually struggle with that you go back to and back to and back to? And a great thing that we encourage couples to do is talk about those things before they heat up. So when you're having a fight, it's not the best time to talk about how to fight. When you're right. having struggles with money, that's not the best time to talk about how do we deal with money. You really have to get out ahead of those things. You know, a lot of times we tell couples that are dating, deciding whether or not to have sex as a premarital couple, you shouldn't do that when you're in the back seat of the car. You have right. to have those discussions way in advance and decide what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Uh, and I think the same is true uh, in married relationships. We've got to get out ahead of some of those issues and talk about those things before they really crop up and start to cause trouble. And right. it's never too late. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not. That you can make a decision, you can make the choice to change. And that's not to say it's suddenly going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow's a new day, right. and <laughs> you can start afresh. Right. Now, we talked a little bit about premarital counseling. What about counseling when you're married for years? When do you know that maybe it's time to bring in a third party? You know, I think one of the best things that we can do is spend time around couples that have been married longer mm. and have more life experience and really bring in those kind of mentoring aspects to a marriage. Obviously, there are times of crisis when things really have deteriorated to the extent that you have to get uh, some professional help. But for us, the couples that have been most uh, helpful for us in our lives have couples that have been married a long time, that are living godly marriages, that can provide a great example for us. Uh, and so that really can take the place of some counseling. Right. But obviously there are times when you're just absolutely deadlocked, nothing is happening, nothing is moving forward, and you really do have to go out and engage some additional help. Right. Well, guys, thank you so much for being with us. Again, the name of the book is Happily Ever After. Yes, it is possible to live that way. If you'd like to know how you can purchase the book, you can go on to our website, harvest-tv.com, and their website is www.youthspecialties.com. Well, sometimes do you feel like you're your own worst enemy? When we come back, we'll find out how to prevent self-sabotage in your life with Dr. Zanya.